Wish I knew that. Wish I knew that. Definitely wish I knew that. Hey, I'm that American in New Zealand. Lucky you. You don't have to figure all this stuff out on your own. I did it for you. You're welcome. Uh, the last one's gross. Fair warning. Let's get started. First things first, show me the money. And when I say money, I mean your bank account information. What I didn't know when we first moved here is that the main way to pay someone either online or, or to pay a person or a business like a farmer's market or even buying a car is with your bank account number. Now, coming from the States, it was really uncomfortable the first few times this happened. I don't know if it's because we have so many scammers over there, but I just thought, hmm, so if you have my bank account number, you really just need one more number to have like access to all my money. I mean, people hack people's accounts even without their bank account numbers, but they definitely don't see it that way here, and I have never even heard of anyone doing anything shady with that information. And if you do act suspicious or weirded out, it will make everyone pretty uncomfortable, just I know from experience. They are also pretty loosey-goosey with asking for social security numbers because they don't have them here. Speaking of the people not doing shady things here, good to note that on the whole, Kiwis follow the rules. As an American, I have known many, many people who break the rules, the law, consistently, and they don't feel bad about it. From my years here in New Zealand, I found that people aren't very interested in that business. They kind of want to do a good job and not even really inconvenience others too much. Maybe it's because they're like given health care and other government programs so it's not such a struggle to survive and there's not this huge pressure to be the best and stomp on others to get there. I mean, there's a reason there's not a lot of Netflix documentaries about the New Zealand serial killers, embezzlements, heists or stock frauds. Even little things like I've talked about those roundabouts here in New Zealand and how there are just too many. I mean, there's just a lot of them. Anyway, apparently the rules on how to enter and exit them with like signaling to the left and right has changed multiple times and they keep up with it. I'm just saying in America, no one would signal in those things and they'd somehow sue the state for hurting their feelings. So yes, most Kiwis follow the rules unless you're in a gang. Yeah, I wish I did know beforehand that there are indeed gangs here in New Zealand. I know, they seem so nice. And I would like to say like, oh, don't worry about it. If you keep your nose down and avoid certain shadier parts of New Zealand, you won't be affected, but I couldn't make this up. Gang members apparently do this thing where they steal your car and then crash it real bad and set it on fire. What? What? Yeah, it's called a, it's called a carbecue. And I'd say this is super rare, except I know four people it happened to in one year in a really nice town, in a really nice part of that really nice town. And I mean, I'd only been living here for like nine months and I didn't know that many people. So just beware of that. Has this happened to any of you guys? Comment down below, I'd love to hear about it. Now, if your car has been stolen and set on fire or you don't have a car yet and are planning to visit New Zealand, I gotta say, you must get a camper van, especially if you're gonna drive around and really see New Zealand. I've said it before, but I'll say it again. They're affordable, you can easily resell them, or you can simply rent one and that way you can spend all your time driving to all those little fun cracks and crevices and conveniently camp everywhere. That was a lot of C's. That was, that was some solid alliteration. And those sites are usually like 50 feet from the beach. It's a dream. I regret not having done that when we first visited. When you are traveling on those beautiful New Zealand roads, do keep in mind, and again, I wish I had known about this first, there are toll roads that are quite unsuspecting. So either Google map it, and you know, when you're picking from your route, just like select no tolls, or make sure to go online. I think you have like two or three days before the fee goes way up and pay those tolls. They will find you with your license plate number if you don't. It is nice that they don't have those annoying and dangerous toll roads where they literally like make you stop off the interstate and hopefully you have the exact change. They had those all over Oklahoma and I think I had to write a check once for like 83 cents because because no they don't take cards and if you don't have exact change they don't have any to give back to you. And even if you do have exact change some of them you just have to like chuck it in a bin you know like those coin funnels at the mall where it spins in a vortex and you watch it as they take away your quarter because you didn't have a penny. You remember those? And if you miss it, then you have to get out of your car, which is like right near the interstate. People are going like 80 miles an hour. And oh yeah, there's like 20 cars lined up behind you watching. Dumb method. You know what I also find a dumb method? 
how New Zealand sells houses. It's like a blind online auction, I guess. You just like go to the house site online and then you bid when it's time and then they say yeah or yeah nah. So it's like, how much do I offer? Well, I don't know, how much do you want to offer? Hmm, I mean, how much are local houses of the same square footage selling for? And with, of course, adjusting for the size and quality of the property as well as the age of the build out and considering inflation and interest rates. Actually, uh, yeah, never mind. That sounds like a full-time job. Wouldn't it save a lot of time by just putting a price down on the site? Then you can decide if you want it first. Anyways, good to know if you're thinking of coming over and buying a home. Um, hey, if you find these videos helpful and or entertaining at all and you want more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. Honey, you're gonna love it. Something else I wish I knew before coming over here was that yes, things are expensive, but there is a solution that you need to take advantage of. It's a little site called Trade Me. Yes, I've talked about this before. Now, when I'm talking expensive, I'm talking mainly about about appliances and electronics like KitchenAid mixers, food processors, Vitamix, Dyson vacuums, desktop computers, TVs, speakers, that kind of thing. They are wildly more expensive over here than in the States and there's really no point in bringing them over because they have a totally different plug and circuitry over here so you will not be able to use them, even with an adapter. So yes, you have to buy them here, but you don't have to buy them in the store at full price. You can buy those higher end quality brands on Trade Me. They have a lot of new and almost new items for much less. And again, like I've said before, it's much more reliable than like Craigslist or eBay. And trust me, it is worth buying those brands because here it seems like they kind of have either the cheapest, worst quality, like gonna break in a month item, or the lower end brands you would find in the States, like what you get at Walmart even but they charge an insane amount, so you might as well go for the best quality, but at a reasonable price. Speaking of everything costing more, yes, that is true. Housing, cars, food, all of it. But I do wish I had a better understanding that also, you will also make less money. And even to nearby places like Australia. I have heard that is where you wanna go if you want to make more money, but hey, we didn't come here for that. We just came here for the relaxing atmosphere and lifestyle that's what we were after, and we sure got it. You know what else we got? The cutest lingo you'll ever hear in your lifetime. Aww. Cutesy, but also very helpful to be aware of so you don't have to ask what they mean all the time. For instance, they like to put a lot of ease at the end of words, so like brekkie, prezi, jelly, chili bin, mozzies, lollies, wellies, or gumboots as they are also called here. Had no idea. Other cutesy words include jumpa, jandals. Now this is one that I don't get. I feel like somebody just misspelled sandals. I don't know. Anybody know? How about some Maori words that are frequently used like kiora and atiora, aotora. <laughs> one second. I'm not gonna mess this up. How to say New Zealand in Maori. We are looking at how to pronounce the original in English as New Zealand. This name means in Maori, the land of the long, white clear. How do you say it? In Maori, it is said as Aotearoa. Like I was saying, Aotearoa. That would have been a nice one to know. No one will tell you that. Also some food words like mince. Think like mince meat pie, which we also do not have in the States, but here lots of savory meat filled pies. Capsicum, kumra, biscuit. I think that's like a British carryover thing. Icing sugar. Along with those lines is icing. They are not familiar with frosting. Good luck finding powdered sugar and frosting. They'll be like, what? Beetroot. If you just say beet, they will clarify with beetroot, to which I say, yes, of course. Do you also carry carrot root? Potato root, perhaps? This is fun. Let's just do a few more, hey? Tasty cheese. Car park, indicator, torch, takeaways, smoko, on the piss. Now, that's that's not what you think. By the way, if you're enjoying this, give me a like, would you? It really helps support me so I can keep making these very fun, I mean informative videos for you. In regards to social interactions, when I first got here, I do wish I had a better feel for, like, how do I put it? Like just being a bit more of a subdued version of myself. I just kind of feel like I came in a little bit hot for the laid back Kiwi lifestyle. A little jazzy razzmatazzy, guns blazing. And that can be a bit off-putting, you know? I suspect I also probably overshared 
not realizing that Kiwis are just a bit more private with their emotions and inner world stuff. So I think I was just a bit much and could have held it back a bit. Reeled it in. Just shut the b up. All right, this one's for the girls and it's a little gross, fair warning, but I'm sure sharing it anyways because I wish someone had done the same for me. The tampons have no applicators. I kept buying them and then realizing, oh, so they, they want you to just like, you just without a, got it. I did find some that I was used to with a bit of searching, but it just took me aback and I wish I had known that beforehand. If you're into this info, then you probably are seriously thinking of moving or visiting and I'm so excited for you. I want your time here to be easy peasy, so also be sure to check out this here video about moving here. And we'll see you next time. Bye. A lot of Netflix documentary, <clears throat> documentaries, documentaries. Someone's thirsty. Drink it up. Can you hear that? <laughs> All the water. It's still going. Hydrate. Good boy.